Right, Wardy, are you ready to reminisce about uh, learning how to play football when we started and how we went about it? Let's go. What memories do you have of the first football match you went to? It'll have been a Bradford City game, I think. Because we had season tickets the first year they were in the Premier League. So that was a good experience, you know, I think I was... I've been seven, eight, maybe. Where did you sit? Behind the dugouts, if you look at the dugouts on the left. Yeah. We were up there, I remember sprinting to the front when the players were coming out trying to get their autographs and so yeah that was that was a good experience. Most iconic footballing moment that you remember? I'll go with something that probably everybody would remember um, or will know about and that was kind of Euro 96. Um, I remember that was the first tournament that ever really knew something was going off in terms of international tournaments. Um, Scotland playing England, um, the Gaza goal, and then England getting knocked out uh, on penalties with uh, Southgate missing. That would be my first real sort of memory on, on that sort of side of things, iconic wise, and the magnitude of it. The mine was probably the World Cup, 98. The Beckham getting sent off and, and beat by Argentina. Because I remember we'd gone round to my dad's friend's house to watch it. I remember coming home, I don't think my dad spoke for about three days, he was fuming. What are your memories of your first junior club? My only real memory that really sticks out is scoring an own goal. That's about as good as it gets, I think. If I remember rightly, my dad's words was, if he makes it as a professional footballer, he'll run up and down the street with no clothes on. <laughs> I think he actually said that. Um, so yeah, I don't think it was a great start to my footballing career. Who influenced you when you were growing up? Just me dad and my brother. My dad used to, um, my dad used to play, um, but having a brother 18 months younger than me, he was always one that when my dad went around could shove him in nets and uh, any sort of sport, that was um, cricket, tennis, whatever, or on telly at times. We just used to, uh, yeah, football, tennis, golf, cricket. You never fancied following your dad's footsteps and being a goalkeeper then? No, absolutely not. No, <laughs> way too cold two in one question it says first and best goal you scored so I'll go with the first goal you scored first a professional goal it was when I was alone at Swindon I think it was Yeovil playing Yeovil at home yeah it was dropped to us on outside of the edge of the box and half volley and it went home and then the best goal you've scored uh, probably when I was at Cardiff I think it was my 50th league goal it was against Forest decent strike to be fair it's cutting from the right hand side, about 25 yards I think it was, something like that, and Left just hitting it up, yeah, smash it as hard as I could and it flew in the top corner, so it's probably have to be that one. First goal um, was when I was on loan um, at Oxford and we played Merthyr Tidville in the FA Cup and then my best goal would probably be for Brentford away at Shrewsbury, it was like a, I think it was a free kick, uh, got played across. Uh, Cross to the right winger for won it um, and I was kind of just on edge of box turned away from goal and then hooked it back and it uh, went in far far top corner so it must have been decent because you've got about 600 to choose from <laughs> so your favorite player and your favorite footballing idol growing up in the really early days when I lived up at Scotland was Henrik Larsson because yeah. he scored goals in abundance and then came down the road and uh, Premier League were always on, so it was Nistel Roy at the time. Yeah. Um, and Idol, yeah, like you just touched on before, probably Beckham. The way that everybody hated him at one stage. And he came back and became Got England this. captain and his goal against Greece and uh, his goal against uh, penalty kick against Argentina, I think it were, when he got sent off previously. Yeah, probably, probably Beckham. You? Yeah, growing up it was it was Beckham. I had the full curtains, everything. I was a bit devastated when I shaved them off because I wasn't allowed to follow suit. When was the moment you fell in love with football? We'll go with when Barnsley played Ipswich uh, in 99 uh, Championship final. And it was just going to Wembley, um, seeing a sea of blue in Ipswich, seeing a sea, uh, a sea of red in Barnsley, just thinking, this is one of the most pinnacles of, of football that you can get to. Um, the atmosphere, this is what football can 
can do for you at, at such a spectacle, spectacle and um, I guess that was just when I kind of started of dreaming and um, hoping one day that I'll be one of those players out there at such an occasion. Nice. You? Probably when it was the last game of the season at Bradford uh, when we beat Liverpool 1-0 to stay up. Yeah, weather all. Yeah, I still remember it to the day, obviously we needed to win the game. It was Gunnar Haller and crossed it in, whether all edited it in, we all jumped up. I had a nice meat set of pie cooling on the seat in front of me. My dad jumped up, we jumped up. I landed in the pie, covered in it. Everyone's jumping around, celebrating, people crying and all sorts. And at the end of the game, you know, the Liverpool fans have stayed, they're all singing, you'll never walk alone. And the atmosphere was just brilliant. And I thought, like yourself, you know, you just want to be a part of that and be able to recreate stuff like that, you know, it's it's class. What are your memories of playing football with mates? They're really good ones really, just we were lucky enough to have a you know, a big enough garden where I could have the goals set up and you know the little seven side goals and there were quite a few of my mates lived on the same street so we'd either around at my house or one of the lads who lived further down the road, just endless amounts of hours just playing Cuppy doubles and all that kind of stuff, just practicing free kicks. If there was enough of us, you know, little three, four aside games, just literally just going to, like I say, just going to someone's house and just spending hours and hours in the garden, just yeah. enjoying football, no cares, no nothing, just like I say, just a lot of lads in a football, it was class. I'll go with a really obscure one, this is going to sound really strange, but um, we just uh, m uh, moved across schools in Barnsley because we've got a different house. Um, and um, because it were a brand new school opened, it didn't have uh, lasting facilities. Uh, the goalposts weren't open, grass wasn't made or anything like that. So all ball games were banned. Um, so we fashioned, uh, you were allowed to play with milk bottle tops. <laughs> so we used to fill m these bottle tops, uh, just out of a uh, carton of milk, semi-skimmed. The green ones were semi-skimmed, uh, the whole milk ones were obviously blue. Uh, got it mud patch, filled the, like these uh, milk bottle lids with uh, with mud, so they were a bit heavier. Put bags down at one end, so there was one goal there, one goal at the other end, and kicked <laughs> these milk bottles, and that was the ball. Just because we weren't allowed, there was no ball games allowed, so that was one sort of lasting memory of trying to kick a bottle lid that was probably about that thick. Um, yeah, catch it right, and it used to cover miles. <laughs> Never in a million years expected that to come yeah, out of your mouth. So, yeah. <laughs> different but that was one memory that sticks in me head. You do that as, as kids there were loads of times where you didn't have a football and you ended up playing with all sorts kicking lumps out of each other trying to chase a yeah. plastic bottle around the playground and stuff but it just gets everyone involved in it and it's what football does. Yeah, yeah. it does. Power to unite. Add it up.